I simply cannot stand the false doctrines and dogma that is taught and repeated by Christians and they're in all of the relationship videos and then they're in other videos related to women and uh, I've got to clear this up. I've got to clear this up today. Which is there are clear mistranslations as well as verses that are just simply removed um, in order to make it seem like women are second, ha uh, second class citizens whose salvation depends on bearing children and not on their deeds. And um, they are to be subservient to their husbands and basically just his help me. Now, this is completely wrong. This is completely false. Look at your Bible, and uh, the most common Bible that generally is accepted is called the King James Bible. King James was known to be a sexist who pruned and preened the Bible, removing certain texts and promoting others. Also, these books that are in the Bible are mere abbreviations of the original text. Um, I'll have to find you guys the UPC. I was trying to find it um, years, about 10 years ago, I heard about the original Bible being found, and I had uh, the UPC for that. I can't find it. Actually, it might have been more than 10 years ago. This might have been something that I found out in college. So that would have been like 20 years ago. But uh, they had just found all of the source books, which if you had a paragraph in the Bible, it would be an entire book. Like, that's what was found. And it was basically like a whole wall of a library, which were the source texts for the books in the Bible. And uh, so these were shrunk down, certain information removed, uh, certain things promoted when they weren't as important or weren't inspired by God, there, certain things inspired by God removed, certain things that were important were hidden. So, guys, we know this. The devil is hard at work tricking humanity since the dawn of time. And I just simply cannot put up with this sexism. And it's kind of like there's um, racism in, in certain religious groups where, you know, the light and the dark, which is like um, a lamp, they try to um, say that that relates to skin tone. Um, so they stretch it for their own purposes of feeling superior. Uh, putting humans into different classes. So that's completely false. And uh, the bigger problem today is sexism. Uh, what's very dangerous about these lies taught about women in terms of Christianity is that if you have a young woman or even an older woman who's interested, is receptive, and wants to learn more about God, and she hears this stuff, it's going to turn her off. She's going to shut down because this is wrong. It's so obviously wrong that our, our conscience goes against it. So unless you've been raised um, to believe this your entire life, it it's, will strike you as being wrong. Um, God did not make the two genders so we can have a master and a slave. So we can have an important one and then a little help meet. Guys, this is ridiculous. And also the Christians behave and act as though this isn't true while they teach it. While they teach it. And they also teach your deeds don't matter. But, you know, whatever. Okay, so here we have, um, these are not humans, these are Nephilims right here. But uh, you would have a male, a male one. This is the male one, I guess, because it's blue. And when you're blue, you're a boy. <laughs> When you're, you're pink, you're a girl. Also, girls wear uh, skirts here. And, uh, yeah. So, anyways, God did not make the two genders for one to be a slave master, a slave driver, and one to be a slave. This is the most ridiculous thing ever. And, you know, I'm getting uh, videos recommended to me, and then I hear this, and it makes me cringe. My heart and soul rejects it. God is telling me it's wrong, and I already know it's wrong. So, here's the real deal. Is that God made both genders. We each have a specific role. Uh, 
the husband is supposed to be the provider and the wife is normally the nurturer and caregiver who bears children yes now what we do have is not one being subservient to the other that's not what we have we have is a union of mutual love and respect see so they love each other and they both care what the other one wants and to submit means to ask so if you wanted to spend money on something then you would submit that to your spouse so um, say that uh, your husband wants to buy a sports car then he would submit to you he would come to you and ask you if that was okay and that's only proper and uh, what do you want um, I'm trying to think what do you want because I don't buy myself much um, let's see you want a trip to like a you want a trip to like some island in the, the Caribbean or something okay so then you ask your husband okay and he's like well we don't really have money for that you're like okay and then you agree okay so he's like I want this I want this sports car okay it costs like twenty five thousand dollars oh we don't have money for that okay now they both submitted to each other this is what it means is that you respect your partner's opinion you ask them when in making important decisions I'm not talking about if you buy a five dollar sandwich here let's not be ridiculous but um, if you are going to be doing something that will annoy your partner and they've made it known to you you should stop um, like if there's something you do that your partner doesn't like they tell you then you should try not to do it anymore this goes for both genders like okay he's clipping his toenails all over the floor and he doesn't pick them up and so the good wife here doesn't start hitting him she doesn't scream at him and call him names the first time she just says hey I don't like the toenails on the floor would you please pick them up okay so then a good husband is like sure okay and then maybe um, she is brushing her hair and getting hairs all over the place and they're like stuck to everything and so her husband comes and says oh your hairs are getting all over the place you know do you think you could brush it like in the bathroom and pick them up and like oh sure of course okay this is what to submit means now when it comes to one person in the relationship having more authority first of all okay this is Amy and this is Sonic here they are a team they work together they have the same goal so having two leaders in this case is good because maybe there's something that let's just say Amy because I don't want to seem like a horrible fem feminist so Amy um, was trying to figure out some problem like the solution to a problem and she couldn't and so then Sonic comes over and he's like oh I know how to do that okay I know how to fix that so now having both leaders here they're able to solve a problem so it's not about one being in charge it's that they both care about each other it's not a competition and they want the same goal so there are cases where God says that one partner in the relationship has more authority and this also extends to greater society so let's say traditionally the husband would be making the money so he's the one making the money in charge of the finances um, now they both use this money it's pretty fair like you're supposed to buy it like buy clothing for yourself buy clothing for your spouse buy a meal for yourself buy the same type of meal for your spouse that type of thing um, but then there are cases where um, sometimes there's a larger expense okay and so let's say that Sonic is earning the money here okay and this is really his forte and Amy wants to use more money now he would have more say so in the situation because he's taken the authority he's doing the work he has more responsibility in work so that gives him the authority let's say um, Amy say that they have kids and she watches she watches the kids um, now 
They both might have a different idea on how to teach these kids or raise these kids. But since Amy is the one who is mainly in charge, she is taking on more responsibility. She has more authority. This is God's law, that whoever takes on more responsibility, they likewise get more authority. Now, if you have cases where they both work, they both work. Then, is she a little slave here? No. Then they would both um, be making equal decisions here. And most of the time, their decisions would be the same because they love and they care about each other. It's about mutual love and appreciation. There is nothing in God's law about subjugation and humiliation and slavery. No. This is wrong. Christians, you are wrong. And if you're teaching this, you're deliberately driving women to atheism and Satanism when they hear this. I'm going to tell you that now. This is false. Um, a good wife would pay attention to what things her husband likes and doesn't like and try to do that out of love. A good husband would do the same thing. That's why our team working together. You see, good thing I got these at the dollar store because they're really making my video better. Um, the sexism that we hear it's not really, um, the sexism that uh, woke liberal media says exists doesn't really exist. Now, we've got different types of sexism. There's a ton of sexism in religion, and this is false. Women are very intelligent, we're very spiritual, um, we have a lot to say. So there's a role for both women and men in teaching religion. Uh, your gender doesn't have to do with whether God inspires you, or whether you've got a good heart, and look into certain matters. Um, so this is completely false. We need to stop spreading these lies. Uh, there is, I'm trying to think of what the verse is, but there's something I think that Paul wrote. I'm not exactly sure. People use it all the time to tell women not to speak in church. And this is completely false too, because it's like really a stretch. So apparently like, uh, I think it's Paul or is it Timothy or someone says uh, women shouldn't speak it in church. If you have a question, ask your husbands at home. So first of all, this is not inspired by God. And second of all, we don't know the context. To me, when I heard this, I thought of teenage girls passing notes and talking during service. And then I thought of the pastor or the preacher jokingly saying this, you know, so that they would pay attention to the service. And then let's say that's all it was. Uh, two 16-year-old girls passing notes, talking to each other, instead of listening to service. And then the pastor is like, uh, you're forbidden to talk during service. If you have a question, ask your husband when you get home. And they did get married at 16. Okay, and that's all there was to it. Um, now this is used thousands of years later. Like, why is this even in the Bible? There's no context. There's no context to tell you what happened, what the situation was. Why were they talking? Is this funny? Was it joking? Was it in jest? Was it serious? Were they punished? We don't know. So the churches automatically go and jump to the conclusion that women can't teach and talk in church. And now it's so ridiculous that we still have female pastors and preachers this day. It's so ridiculous. Uh, the sexism stuff that happens in church, I have to stand against this. Like, there's kingdom spouse stuff coming into my feed, and they bring this up all the time, like how to be a good wife, how to be in submission to your husband. Every time I hear that, I cringe. It, uh, it makes me want to vomit. Uh, uh. Here, here's what I think of your false doctrine. But you know what? I'm the most caring, compassionate person, and I really would care uh, about what my husband likes or dislikes. And I would make an effort to do things he would like, and not to do things he would not like. I did this for the stupid narc, so surely I would do this for a real human being as well. And uh, you probably did this for your stupid narc too. But uh, I just need to get this out here. God is love. And God has made a union based on love. Okay, there's no competition. Uh, there's no, like, slave driver, and there's no slave. And there's no leader, okay, like telling the other one what to do. If anything, a leader is somebody that, um, like a leader is somebody that would just start doing something first and then other people copy it. And there's not even any compulsion. There's not like, uh, you don't even tell people to do it. So like, let's say that the dishes needed done. Then the leader 
the leader, let's say that is the case, the leader would just step up and calmly and politely start doing the dishes. And then other people would see that, like, oh, okay, feel bad, be inspired, and they would start doing the dishes too. That's actually what a leader would be. But when you have a marriage relationship, it's not about who's a leader and who's a follower because you're working together and you're on the same team. And if somebody takes on more responsibility in a certain role, then they get more authority. So no matter what aspect of the relationship, if somebody devotes more time and attention or money into something, they get more authority. Now, normally women stay home, but not always in this day and age. There's a lot of health problems. Um, there's a lot of different circumstances that, that weren't so prevalent in the past. So, you know, nothing's black and white. But whenever I hear this, I cringe. It makes me sick. It makes me mad. Uh, this is like the best relationship that God has made for us to enjoy. And then the church gets in here and tries to cause conflict and chaos here. You try to cause conflict and chaos. You should be excited to see your person, rushing back to see them, oh, thinking of what they like, wanting to get food that they like, thinking what shows they like, okay? You're not like, hmm, this needs done. Let me think about um, what to tell my wife to do later. I want to smack her around a little bit if she doesn't do it. You think, you think that's what God made uh, marriage for? No, I don't think so. So, um, Christians, you really need to get your act together. And here's the issue. Let's say this, this is false, and you are telling people this and teaching people this. You're going to be held accountable on Judgment Day, and this possibly led to somebody falling into atheism or Satanism. You are going to be held accountable by God. Your own skin will testify against you. So guys, this is serious, okay? Marriage is about love, and it's a wonderful thing. It's a blessed thing. And you're both working for the same goals. You're both working for each other. And so let's throw out all this stuff that uh, is not from God. Timothy is not God. Paul is not God. They had a lot of context, the times they were living in, the things they were doing, what was socially acceptable. And so when they said something in passing, we don't even understand what the implications of that were. And to use that to try to enforce the worst possible translation to subjugate half of the humans on earth, that's false and I'm not stating for it. God bless you guys.